Good morning, Winterberry family. It's great to see you this morning on this uh, beautiful fall day. It's uh, feeling more and more like that all the time. Uh, Most of the neighbors' uh, leaves from their three maple trees that surround me are now uh, on my yard. Just... It's the sign of it's the sign of autumn, really. That, uh, and I, I, without attitude, I rake all their leaves. Well, just a little bit of attitude, just a, just just a little bit. Um, there's a there's a couple things that you probably should know about. Uh, Baby song is uh, happening each Thursday, and I do thank you for your prayers uh, for that that gathering. It's a great a great outreach. Uh, can I take a minute? not even a minute. I was talking to the divisional commander this week and we talked about how Winterberry's going. Do you know that, don't tell anybody, but Winterberry comes up at divisional leadership meetings. I just want you to know that in a very positive way. Um, but they were talk- we were talking about, talking about how things go here and talking about kind of the new, the new way that, uh, that church has, is done in Canada and uh, talking about youth ministry and ministry to young people and baby song. And uh, that was the highlight that, uh, that uh, uh, Colonel Lynn brought to our attention. Don't, don't think that's not youth ministry. That's youth ministry. So, so thanks for your prayers for that, uh, that event on Thursdays. Bible study, how Christmas can change your life, uh, I think is what we want to call that. And so uh, each Thursday, 1.30 here, uh, the, the, um, the challenge for Bible study is come to the building and see if you can find them. Because they, they meet in different little places, but, uh, but that's just because the place is so busy right and so uh, but they'll probably be down that way somewhere so please Uh, and if you're interested uh, don't feel like you can't drop in here uh, if you haven't been to the first few Um, just uh, maybe give Darlene a call and she'll make sure she's got enough handouts men's breakfast the next one upcoming is November the 30th do you know that we had I think we I counted 30 30 men eating eating breakfast on Sunday on Saturday 30 and then a, a bunch of helpers. So get this chance to say thanks to those guys that came and, uh, and enjoyed breakfast. That was good. Thanks to those people who made it all happen uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the kitchen and, and clean up and all those things. So really excited about our men's breakfast ministries. Uh, I hear that next month the speaker is uh, okay. This is coming right up, right? Uh, I believe Sue has some, uh, some handouts if you want them to pass around or put up or do whatever. Uh, I'll talk about our other thing in a minute, but that's coming right up. Uh, just be aware that this, uh, this event uh, comes here and uh, it's just a, a day of getting people in the building from out in the community and uh, each, of those, each of those crafters and vendors uh, gets vetted by J&R, that's Joanne and Ruth. Uh, who pretty much look after all the logistics of this thing, and we just we just collect some some money for uh, for hosting it. So it's really quite a quite a great uh, great Saturday. Uh, what's next, uh, Lance? Oh, open door, great with a treat, but it's not great. It's it's great, right? And I mean, it's always good to 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 fool the major. He's getting older, you know, and so. So I was pleased to see when I read in the wire that it's actually greet with a treat and we made a little typo there and we're sorry, whoever made the typo, we're sorry to, uh, to the organizers, but uh, greet with a treat. Uh, make sure you got this on your calendar, okay, for November the 6th, 11 to 1, uh, and uh, make sure you talk to, uh, to Major Marie for details. And you'll see her phone number is there, her phone number's in the wire, call her anytime. That's what she said. No. Well, maybe not too late or too early. Okay. Uh, we, we threw this in just in case you're interested. Newfie dinner over at uh, Mountain Citadel, just to make sure you're aware of that. 25 bucks a person. I heard that it's going to be a, a fairly authentic, although, you know, it's here in Ontario. You can only do so much, but, uh, 
but there, there, uh, there you go for that. What else is on there, Lance? Oh yeah, the Christmas thing. Uh, that's that's kind of lit up online now, so I think you can, if you Google this, you can probably get some tickets for this. It's Roy Thompson Hall. The tickets, I can't remember. They're not very much money, and just to get into Roy Thompson Hall usually is uh, is is great. Just this great spot, but uh, you do have to brave the parking and all that stuff. I know, but we want to. We want to highlight that. It's a great way to get your Christmas uh, kick-started, uh, Christmas with the Salvation Army in Toronto. Um, anything else? I don't think so. No, there we go. So I just wanted to highlight a couple things from the, uh, the wire. Uh, these flowers, uh, in memory of, uh, placed by Barb and Sharon, in memory of their parents, uh, Bill, promoted to glory October 27th, 2009, and Marguerite, promoted to glory uh, 24th of November, 22, and their brother Brian, uh, promoted to glory on May the 4th, 2018, uh, and Sharon's late husband, Lawrence B. McGuire, uh, promoted to glory on the 18th of October, uh, 2020. Um, so enjoy these uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, flowers placed here uh, in memory by um, by Barb and Sharon. Um, there's a couple of people that I want you to add to the prayer list. Uh, so those that are on there, will you add uh, Marilyn Roberts? Um, June, June sent us a note, June Speakman sent us a note this week. And she, uh, what did she say to Sue this week? I think she said, I wish, June, if you're listening, thanks for this encouragement. I, I just, Winterberry is such a special group of people and she said, I just wish we could bundle, I could bundle them up and, and plant them next door to me. Uh, but she, she says, uh, she reaches out, uh, not, not, you know, regularly, to, and, and just, she's so thankful for your continued contact with her. So, and I thank you for that. So she's a great lady, and you know that. Uh, Marilyn Roberts is one of her dear friends in St. Thomas, and uh, just want you to be praying for, for Marilyn. And uh, Tim, uh, Tim Monroe is going in for some surgery this week, so if you would uh, pray for him. Now, I wrote on the front of this uh, the sign, sign, I wrote sign. The sign is dark, and that's unfortunate. Uh, we've had some, some uh, transformer issues in the sign uh, that is going to require us to replace a, or put a different part in. Uh, I said to somebody, if you say something about the sign, you can tell me the sign is out. Lots, lots of people have, so that's good. That's number one. Everybody notices it. That's good. Number two, I think I said to them, yeah, talk, let's talk about the sign, but wait a minute. Where's my blood pressure medication? I'll just take one of those, and, uh, <laughs> but because it's been a bit of a, bit of a bumpy ride uh, with the sign, but uh, just, just recently. Um, but anyway, uh, I, suspect, I suspect that after church today, uh, I'll unpack all of my frustration with, with Scott, maybe. And he and I will talk electrical talk, and uh, we'll, we'll have a good chat about that, perhaps. Okay, let's, uh, let's, let's enjoy, enjoy some worship together. Uh, the band introduced our, our opening song, which, you know, when I hear this song, I, I don't know what happens to you sometimes, uh, sounds, and, but when I hear this song, I am, I am sitting in the third pew uh, from the front, in Culloden United Church, and my grandmother, sorry guys, it's my grandmother, is on the piano playing holy, holy, holy. And, and I think I learned how to sing harmony to this song when I was just a kid going to church whenever they could drag me there. So I just love this song. The beautiful part of it is it tells the story of God. So we're going to stand together. The band's going to help us uh, with this song this morning.
So as a young person, you can imagine me having conversations with my grandmother about what are cherubim and seraphims and works and arts. Right? Works and arts, because I didn't know what a work was or an art. Uh, but uh, the beautiful thing was that she was able to explain those things to me. And uh, as a young fellow, I began to understand just a little bit about God's involvement in my life. Praise God for, uh, for that person in my life. The third verse, holy, 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 though the darkness hides you, Lord though the eye of sinful man hear that hear that line right you live in a sinful world we're going to talk about that a bit today and and other people may not see god the way you see him so so that's the world you live in so so be aware of that as you walk day by day step by step we're going to sing the third and the fourth verses with the band thank you very much Last night, uh, a few of us gathered back in the family room in the back of the church there and uh, watched, uh, watched a video together, which was uh, really quite amazing. Uh, a great, great story of uh, how Rebecca St. James uh, kind of found her feet in the music world. Um, and uh, we also uh, ate popcorn and drank some drank some soft drinks and uh, I don't know who invented uh, cheese and caramel popcorn but I want to talk to them because I now have to go on a program I think to break an addiction I don't know like it was so so good um, all that to say that um, um, so end of the month next month uh, um, I want you to know that, and you'll see some more things floating out in the wire about this, but there's uh, another adult uh, fellowship night. Uh, we're calling it a chili cook-off. So uh, if you've got a chili recipe that you've uh, kind of archived uh, somewhere in the cloud or in your shelf or in your cupboard, um, you want to get that out. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about it as the day approaches, but uh, we're going to have uh, a bit of a chili contest here. and. Uh, Hopefully you'll all be able to make it back to church on Sunday after that. And then we've got some music that we're going to be uh, sharing with you. We might share a little more about that, but, um, but uh, that's, that's coming up on the 23rd of November. Mark your calendar. It's in the, it's in the wire. Um, we learned this song last week, and um, we're going we're gonna to add just a little bit. Lance uh, said that if we do it properly, that we can probably uh, pull this off this morning. But we're going to add a little, a little layer to it that we held off last week um, uh, whole, just, just to make sure we didn't overwhelm you. But um, this, this song, Bless God, uh, is really the, 
the, uh, the Beatitudes, and it's a beautiful, a beautiful song. You sang it so well last week, so hopefully you can remember it. Uh, we're going to start with the verse instead of the chorus. Uh, just uh, just uh, sing, as, sing as you can here. are those who run to him who place their hope and confidence in Jesus he won't forsake them blessed are those who seek his face bend their knee and fix their gaze on Jesus they won't be shaken come on and praise the Are those who walk with him whose hearts are set on pilgrimage with Jesus they'll see his glory and blessed are those who die to live whose joy it is to give it all for Jesus and for him only oh Jesus all for your glory watching every chance I get I'll bless your name bless God when the weapons forming bless God when the walls are falling bless God when it goes before me every chance I get I'll bless your name bless God for he holds the victory bless God cuz he's always with me bless God for always worthy every chance I get I'll bless your name Every chance I get, I'll bless your name. Every chance I get, come on and pray.
thanks for um, learning a new song. It's, uh, I know it's not easy, but uh, think about, uh, sometimes I think about the early church and uh, every week there might be something new. So, um, so uh, not so much here. But thanks, thanks for enjoying that. Uh, you're singing very well. This one you know very well. Um, it's an old hymn that says, Lord, I need you every hour, every hour I need you. In your presence, there is comfort. In your presence, there's peace. And thank you that it's not just when we come to this place on a Sunday that we can experience your presence. But each step of our walk, each step of our day, each breath that we take, you are with us. You go with us, you stay with us, 
we are never alone. You are holy. You've established that since the beginning of time. We see it in your word when we read it. We know it in our hearts when we speak to you. So Lord, today, in your presence, we fall before you, ready to hear your voice in our hearts as we worship, as we pray, as we read your words, as we ponder what you might be saying in our hearts, as your Holy Spirit moves among us from person to person, from heart to heart. Lord, help us in these moments to be strengthened in our spirit for the days and the situations that only you know are ahead of us. Father, we lift up people that are on our hearts today. Maybe they've gotten mentioned in our service, people like Marilyn and Tim and others. Maybe they haven't gotten mentioned by name out loud, but here in our hearts you hear their names and you're there. Because we need you and they need you. So we lift up our prayer to you. Will you move in very close to us today, I pray. Sing, Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Lord, I need you. Oh, At this moment in our service, we um, are going to wait upon you for tithes and offerings. And as uh, our ushers come forward, uh, I will pray, and uh, then we will share in that ministry together. And you'll see that Sylvia is going to uh, share my life is in you, Lord, as we do so. Let's pray. Father, thank you for these moments. Thank you for these moments that we can carve out in our week to be intentional about our worship with you. As we're intentional this morning about what we give back to you because you have it all. You've entrusted us with it. And we give back to you a portion, just a portion of what you've entrusted to us and pray your blessing upon our offering. Take it, bless it, use it for the extension of your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you, Sylvia, for playing that for us this morning. I don't know about you, but I was going down a little bit of a memory lane of singing that song over the last few years and uh, was bringing back a lot of really nice memories. So thank you, Sylvia, for choosing that one for many different reasons. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of Ephesians. And I always like to remind myself the purpose of the, the writing, well, we all know it's to glorify Jesus and to lift up his name, but I also like to remember the audience where the letter was going and who wrote it. So I'm going to take a couple of seconds and just read a little portion that's in this Bible um, that I picked up out there that helps us to remember what the book of Ephesians is for. So if you'll indulge me for a couple of moments, we'll just review that before we read Ephesians chapter 3. It says, this letter was written by Paul during his two-year imprisonment in, Roman, uh, in Rome, rather, about, about 30 years or so um, after the crucifixion of Jesus. This letter probably was sent not just to the church of Ephesus, but to all the Christian churches near that. Ephesus was a large, important city at the time, so it was natural. It was a natural city for the Christian churches. One of Paul's themes in Ephesians is that of unity and God's purpose to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. Because of this unity, Paul wrote, all Christians are one family in Jesus, and they should act with love toward one, uh, toward one another. He gives believers instructions on how to live a life of love by addressing the husband and wife relationship, the parent-child relationship, and the slave-master relationships. In this letter, Paul also writes about the church, not a church building in a certain place, but the church that is made up of all Christians who have ever lived. We call this the church universal, and he compares Christ's relationship to the church to the body, a building, and to a wife. So let's read, if you have your Bible with you, uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. And in this Bible, there's a heading that says, A Prayer for the Ephesians. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole, whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the saints, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading and to the hearing of his most holy word this morning. We're going to continue to worship by singing Psalm 721, Whiter Than the Snow. And there are three verses, and the band is going to help us, and we're so blessed by the band each week as we come and listen to them. And I'm so appreciative of the music ministry that they have for us. And it says, tell me what to do to be pure in the sight of the all-seeing eyes. Tell me, is there no thorough cure, no escape from the sins I despise? Tell me, can I never be free from the terrible bondage within is there no deliverance for me from the thraldom of indwelling sin? Let's stand together. We'll sing verses 1 and 2 together uh, as the band 
leads us in these beautiful words. Yes. So let's, uh, let's read the words together as we uh, end this time before we have our prayer together. Let's uh, turn to the next uh, slide, the next one. Okay, let's, let's read those words uh, as we prepare our hearts to have prayer before we hear from Major Brad. Will my Savior only pass by, only show me how faulty I've been, Will he not attend to my cry? Can I not at this moment be clean? Blessed Lord, almighty to heal, I know that thy power cannot fail. Here and now I know, yes, I feel, the prayer of my heart does prevail. Please be seated. Let's share together in a moment of prayer before Major Brad comes to bring us uh, his words this morning. Father God, we are so thankful for each and everything that you do for us throughout the week. And now as we have come to gather again in this way, we pray that you would bless us in an incredible way that only you know how to do. We pray now for the manger as he comes to break the word that he may teach us and remind us gently and with strength of the truths of those words. Father, it is no coincidence that you put together these books of the Bible to help us to walk more closely in the way of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And you sent the Holy Spirit as well to guide us and to remind us of Jesus and his sacrifice and to help us along life's way. So Lord, just let us see you. Let us feel your holy presence and let us learn to be more and more like you as we move forward today and into the future. Amen and amen. Thank you, Wayne, um, and uh, sorry, sorry that uh, that something happened there. Uh, but you know, uh, Doris Monroe was telling me this week that uh, there were times this week when the words weren't lining up with the mouth on her television, and that happens. Sometimes the tune and the words, they just don't line up, but we'll figure that out. We'll find out what went wrong there, and uh, um, we'll... We'll get it right. Sorry about that. Uh, who knew there were, well, we, did, we do know there's a couple songs about whiter than snow. So you got to hear a tune and sing some other words, but uh, anyway, that's it's all good. We're, we're moving on here. Uh, good words, whiter than the snow, wash me, wash me, 
then I shall be whiter than the snow. Um, I don't know if you've uh, kind of uh, paid attention to this, uh, this little brand that we did for uh, this series, which is coming to an end today. So I, I kind of called, uh, called October uh, thankful month and um, didn't have anybody come to me and say that I spelt thankful wrong. Thank you for that. Uh, some of the younger people in my life got quite a kick out of the little guy trying to keep the empty uh, out of his tank, and, and uh, I, 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 I hope you get that. I hope you get what that's saying. You know, you're in charge of thankfulness. Um, you can choose to be or not to be thankful, and uh, what we've tried to do, I've tried to do this month, is, uh, is to give you just those, those kind of those four things that if you just need kind of the high level 30,000 feet uh, view of how thankfulness works in your life, well, I, I've given you four things. We're going to review them very briefly uh, in a minute or two, but uh, uh, to, to, to understand that God has put you in a place where you have the opportunity to be thankful all the time. And if you need to choose a topic, I've given you four, and they all start with P, just to be handy, you know, just to be handy. Um, they, uh, well, we could have you repeat them, but... Uh, no, never mind, we won't do that. Uh, thankful for God's presence. Thanks for, God, thanks for God's provision in our life. That was Thanksgiving Sunday. Uh, thanks for God's people. What a powerful Sunday we had when a few of you, a number of you said, hey, this person in my life did this in my life, and I'm just thankful. Wow. Today we want to talk about God's power uh, in our lives. There they are. And uh, so, so I, I want you to kind of take note of that. If there's ever a moment when you're saying, well, yeah, I don't feel too thankful, there's four things you can just zoom in on and be thankful. Uh, today, though, I want to talk about God's power. And I, 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 when I think about power, you know, because of the way I'm wired, I guess, uh, I, I always think about electricity. And, you know, I, I, I guess it's because I'm an electrician and a I tell people a, a lineman, a power lineman. That was my, that was my trade before uh, becoming an electrician, uh, before becoming an officer, actually, a power lineman. I don't know what that means to you, but uh, one person in my crew said, yeah, that just means that we're, we're, uh, we're qualified from nine volts to lightning, basically, lightning. Uh, and I've seen a fair bit of that and what it can do, and so I understand the power of lightning, and I can understand what it does. But, you know, I'm, I'm not really talking about that kind of power this morning. A and then it's maybe coincidental, I don't know, uh, that, that we're just a week and a day away from this, I don't know if you've heard about this little election that's going on south of the border. A and a a as, as we watch what is deemed in the world, and I won't get political on you here, but you know I was born there, and so I've got some family there, and, and so, you know, what, what is most likely the most power, powerful position in the whole world, it seems, uh, being elected next week, and that's about all we'll say about that. We don't, I don't want you to go anywhere with that, but, but it's not even that kind of power. Although as I was thinking about, well, what kind of power are we talking about? I, I, did, I did kind of recall some of the things I've been reading recently in, in First Chronicles and First and Second Kings about, about the abuse of power. Uh, and, and right now I'm kind of launching into Exodus and I've got Moses. Uh, I've got Moses. He should have been dead, right? Because, because the person in power said uh, all, all children who are male will be put into the into the river with the crocodiles, right? So, so abuse of power. I, I had to think about that a little bit this week, uh, but I, I'm I'm kind of thinking more about uh, about that energy that's in you, that that power that Wayne talked about just a minute ago. That that is that is God's God's power at work in you, and and I feel like in this day and age uh, where we live, we've kind of discounted that quite a bit. Uh, we really don't count on God for much here in Canada because we, we've got so much. What, what do you, you know, we, we could even get to the point where some people would be thinking, well, what do you need God for? I got everything I need. You know, I got everything I need. And yet we sing a song this morning, don't we, with our hearts that says, Lord, I need you. 
every hour, every minute, every breath, I need you. I got thinking about weariness. And, and it's that, that whole running out of strength, running out of energy as a, as a human who walks around here in 2024. Uh, it, it's, it's, that, it's that burning the candle at both ends thing. You know how that goes? And you know how you used to be able to do that? And, and, and then you can't? And, and you, could be a, you could be a younger person or an older person, but you, you reach a limit. You hit a limit. And, and I, I've, met, I've met university students who have burnt the candle at both ends, and they look like they're, they're 80 years old or older. Right? They're, just, they're just done, just washed out. Burning the candle at both ends will make you weary. How about doing things that are unpleasant? Have you got some things going on in your life right now? And you could make the little list with me, but, but some things that are going on in your life right now that you have to handle, but they're not pleasant things at all. And we could go anywhere with that, couldn't we? That'll wear you out. That'll make you weary. How about, how about feelings of betrayal? How about that place where you've, you've reached that, that, uh, that state we call burnout? That, that, that's worn out. Or hurt, or angry, or in pain, or, or, or dealing with emotions that you didn't really want to deal with. That'll wear you down. It'll wear you out. Fighting problems that we created. <laughs> we don't even want to talk about those things, do we? Because our pride gets in the way. But, but think about a problem that you created. You know, you did this thing, or you said this thing, or you, you encountered this thing, and now you've got to figure it out. And how are you going to deal with that? Or, or even worse sometimes is dealing with problems that other people created. Right? Those things will wear you down. How about losing your way? Just getting lost in life. Coming to that place where you're really not sure where you're going or what you're doing or why. These are all places where we've got to figure out God's power because it's in all of those places, and I didn't count them. I don't know how many little bullets that, that is, but it's all of those places where we've got to say, Lord, I need you. Every hour, every circumstance, every place, I need you. So there's Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now unto him was able to do exceeding abundantly, in my, in my uh, old New King James Version, exceeding abundantly above everything, anything we could ever ask or imagine. And here's, here's the line, according to the power that's at work in you. That's the one that always gets me. According to the power that's at work in me. Well, what if I've discounted God's power? Well, we got a couple slides. We got, a, we got, we got five movements that we're going to kind of just walk through uh, about God's power this morning. And here's movement number one. God's power has the ability to transform weakness. Now, Paul talked about this in 2 Corinthians, and you've, you've read this, but, but he, said, he said this line. It's a one-liner for Paul. He does, he's got a lot of them. But he said, your power, God, is made perfect in fact, it was Jesus speaking to him. I don't use red-letter Bibles. Do you know why I don't use red-letter? Do, do any of you have a red-letter Bible? You know, where the words of Jesus are in red? Yeah, you're being very cautious about that, but yes, I saw that hand. I saw that hand. Do you know why I don't? You don't. I thought we knew each other so well. I, I'm colorblind. <laughs> And red is one of the ones that, I mean, I know it's there. I can see red lights, and I can see that, uh, I can see that Gord's got a, a green shirt on. I mean, I know that for sure. <laughs> but uh, so when I read red-letter Bibles in public, it sounds like I can't, I can't see the words. Or I can't see the words. I can't see the words. Uh, in your red-letter Bible, it's very possible that the, those words in 2 Corinthians uh, uh, were in red. When Jesus actually said those words to Paul, he said, my, my strength is made perfect in your what? In your weakness. So God, God is telling Paul, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Can you, can you even get your head around that? 
that God's strength is made perfect in your weakness. That, that is, when you get to that place where you're running out, when you get to that place where you've exhausted all of your hoarded resources, that God's strength is just getting started up. It's incredible. He uses the very areas where we find ourselves weak to show his strength, to demonstrate, to demonstrate his strength. Now, I don't know what weaknesses you're, you're going through in your mind right now, but here's the thing that I've come to know is that you should know them. You should know, you know, you don't have to talk about them. Well, you can, you know, with people that you trust, I suppose. You can get, get vulnerable about those things, but you should know the things that you're not, you're not that strong about. And they could be anything from, you know, gifts and talents to, to things that you really struggle with. You should know them. Because right now, right here in this place, Winterberry, on this day, I'm telling you that you should specifically bring those to him. You should specifically bring those to God. And you should be praying things like, God, I know, I know I am weak. I know I'm unworthy. God, make your strength real to me in that area, in that area. Show yourself strong in that area of my life. And I don't want to get going down that road because sometimes our weaknesses are pretty personal, aren't they? Many times, in fact, most of the time, I'm almost going to say all of the time, the things that we're weak about, we're not terribly proud of. And let me say that, that we're terribly proud people. So we don't want to expose our weaknesses all over the place, and I don't think you should. But as you meet with the Father, that should come up in the conversation. Sometimes I'm praying that God would protect me in those places. Sometimes I'm praying that God would, would help me through those places of weakness. Your strength is made perfect in my weakness. You know what that does? That gives you freedom from having to fix everything. To fix those things. Turn them over to God. What's the next uh, slide going to say to us? Well, that, that's, that's true, isn't it? That God guides us. In his power, he guides us through difficult times. There's this verse that, uh, I think I've told you this, but I'm pretty proud of it in a good way, that uh, when I was a kid in grade one or two, uh, I got a bookmark. I don't have it anymore. I don't know where it went. Uh, I got a bookmark for memorizing uh, the 23rd Psalm uh, in the King James Version, of course. Uh, but it was verse, it's verse 4 I want you to think about this morning for just a second. Y you know verse 4, do you remember it? I, I, if I'm going to quote it to you and not read it from the Scripture's pages, I'm going to have to go King James on you. Sorry, I'll go King, I'll go King James on you. But it, it starts out with this word, yay. You know what yay? In today's world, yay means yay, but not that. It means yes. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear what? And why? Because your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now, have you ever thought about what a rod and a staff is in a shepherd's hand? Do you know what they are? Uh, the rod, I'm understanding, was a very short, we'd call it a short baseball bat. It was about this long, and oftentimes they carried it on their belt. And you know what that was for? It was for looking after wolves and things like that. Now, that's the rod. And the staff, the staff would have been the shepherd's crook, right? That, that he, would, he would hook the sheep by the neck and pull them out of trouble. So the, the rod was for prodding and poking and defending. And the staff was for taking sheep and hooking them and pulling them out of danger or pulling them out of the thicket or pulling them away from things that would hurt them. And then David says, your rod and, their sta and, your, rod and your staff, they what? They comfort me? I don't feel a lot of comfort when I'm being prodded, and I don't feel a whole lot of comfort when I've got something around my neck yanking me out of the thicket. I don't feel a whole lot of comfort right there. But think about it. God's power 
in your life has the ability to walk with you through difficult times. Times when you've gotten in trouble. Times when you've gotten, when things haven't gone the way you hoped they would go. Times when situations have caught up with you. Let's, you want to talk about struggles? We can talk about struggles. Financial struggles? Sure, they're in the list. Health issues? Check that one off too. Uh, how about broken relationships? Yep. Any of those times when you find yourself walking through hard times, your rod and your staff, your presence, it comforts me. God's power can take you through the hardest times. I promise. So when you're going through tough seasons, you're not alone. God's power is giving you the endurance to keep going forward even when it seems like you're not sure what the next step should be. The unpleasant things. He guides you through. Well, we got another label for you. This one's miraculous. You know, I got thinking about this this morning uh, just for another minute before I came over here. The miracle of transformation. Now, I know we're talking about power, and if you really want to know the primary problem out in our sign, uh, I'm, I'm sure you want to know that, Terry. The primary problem out in the sign is a transformer problem. It's a transformer problem. And it's pretty easy to fix, but you know, you got to go to Illinois to get that transformer. I'm just saying, transformation is an interesting thing. It takes something that's not terribly useful and transforms it into something that's very useful. I learned about it uh, the hard way, I, I suppose, a few times in my life, in my early days when I was working on uh, tower lines. I said we'd go to electrical. I'm sorry, that's just how my brain works. But I'm up on a tower, and the voltage on the tower is 225,000 volts not terribly useful in your house. In fact, if you hook anything up to 225,000 volts, pretty guaranteed you're going to explode it. But what we need to do is transform that from 225,000 volts down to house voltage, 120. Transformation, that's what it's about. Taking something that's not terribly useful, maybe very powerful, and transforming it into something that's very useful. Do you know that God does transformation in you? And that might be the biggest miracle that you've ever experienced. You know, he does miracles, and I don't want you to doubt that. And you read about them in the scriptures. But there was a moment when Jesus said, even greater things are going to happen. Even greater things. You know what I think the biggest miracle that I've ever experienced in my whole life was? How God took my sorry, going nowhere life and transformed it into something he could use. It still amazes me that a person like me, he could even begin to think about using. And I'm just so thankful. I am so thankful that he... That he, 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 he he put me in the right places, but more importantly, that he transformed me from the inside out. It, it wasn't this just sort of band-aid answer. He, he took hold of my life. He took hold of my heart, and he changed me from what I was to what I could become in, in him. So I'm saying to you, He'll do it for you. His power is at work in you. So surrender. Surrender your thoughts. Surrender your attitudes. Surrender those things that you think maybe are super important that may not be that important to him. And let his power loose in you. Maybe you're battling emotions. Maybe you're battling habits. Maybe you're battling things you've been hurt with. Release those things to him. Let him have his way in you. We won't spend too long on these because they could all be a sermon, I suppose. But look at this. He gives us victory over sin. Now, I know we don't like talking about sin too much in the church anymore. Isn't that awful? Isn't that the place where we should learn about how it works? Isn't that the place where we should figure out what we need to do about sin in our world? Um, somewhere I, somewhere yeah, I wrote here, we live in a sinful world. Uh, kind of like my thankful, uh, we live in a sinful world. So we better figure it out. 
you know, in Romans, there's another, another amazing chapter, but uh, it, it says, uh, what, shall we, what shall we say then? Shall, shall, shall we just sin and let grace, God's grace abound? God forbid that we should live like that. So, so what Paul is saying in Romans 6 is, is you know what, You've got, there's a sin problem in our world. You better figure out how to deal with it. And how to deal with it is by surrendering your life to God and his power. Because see, he's, he's told us that he's about working all things together for good for you and for me who are called according to his purpose. So we live in this sinful world and God and his power have, have the ability to give you victory over those things in your life. You better get a hold of it because if you don't get a hold of it, God will, the sin will get a hold of you. So you place your life in his hands. Well, the next uh, label is the final one, and uh, it talks about equipping us for purpose. And, and what I thought we'd do is go back to that, uh, go back to that, uh, that scripture reading that Wayne uh, read for us a few moments ago, and, and just, just take another, take another just, just another look at it, just another ponder of it. Paul says, for this reason I bow my knees before the Father. You know what that means, right? That, 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 that Paul is praying. You should pray. And you should pray about these things, about your weaknesses and about the difficult stuff you go through and how God is transforming you. Get on that program. Cooperate. And you should be praying about how sin works in your world and how you can be free from that through the blood of Jesus. He says, I, I'm praying to Jesus from whom the whole family in heaven and earth derives its name, that he would grant you according to his riches and glory to be strengthened with power or might, the Bible says, by his spirit in your inner being. Are, are you with me there? That's where God's power needs to land that God's power would find its way into your life, into your spirit, into your inner being, and that you would begin or continue or get along with the work that he wants to do in you. By his spirit. The key verse for this morning, verse 20. So now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above anything you could ever ask or imagine, according to the power, his power, that is at work in you. Paul doesn't say it might be. He doesn't say, well, if you do this and this and this and this first. No, he says God's power is alive and ready to go in you. You don't need to plug into anything else. You don't need to... to do four things and then God's power will activate. You don't need to call the credit card line and activate the power credit card in your life, life and then buy a bunch of insurance. And No, none of that. God's power is at work in you right now. So then what do we do with that? Well, I believe... I believe that we need to acknowledge that we have discounted his power to a great degree. I believe that he wants us to acknowledge before him this morning, as, as believers and, and people who walk in faith, that we don't always call upon him. We often try to figure it out ourselves. So last night, I was walking the big dog in our house um, around the block, He's a, my son's dog, and my son's not there right now uh, till tomorrow. And, and as I was walking the dog and thinking about this morning, um, this song came to me, and I thought, you know, I, I could sing that for you, but I think you've heard enough of me today. So I thought I'd let the person who wrote the song sing it for you. Now, he's not here, uh, but we can get him here on YouTube, can't we, Lance? Sure we can. So... Um, so Stephen Curtis Chapman wrote this song, and the song is, uh, his strength is perfect when my strength is gone. 
and I want you to just listen to the words of this song, which I, I, I was able to, to sing the whole song quietly. So people didn't think I was weird walking the dog singing. Uh, while I was walking last night, and uh, then I got home, and I tuned into the, the, the live version, which was, I think, recorded in the Gaither, Gaither Studio C. You might recognize it from some of the other videos that you watch. Uh, but we're just going to let this play. And as God, as God speaks into your heart, will you just respond? Because there's going to be some words that I've said already. There's going to be some, some things that your brain is going to go to. And, and, and whatever, can we, can we go right back to that day when Jesus was doing his first miracle? Anybody what he said? His mother said, whatever he says, do it. So as God speaks in your heart, can I say that? Whatever he says, whatever thing he brings up, whatever, whatever thought he brings forward, whatever, whatever hurt or habit or hang up that he, that he brings, whatever weakness that comes to mind, whatever he says about that, as you sit for just a few moments, three minutes and 27 seconds, whatever he says, I can do all things Through Christ who gives me strength But sometimes I wonder what he can do through me No great success to show No glory on my own but in my weakness, he is there to let me know that his strength is perfect when our strength is gone. He'll carry us when we can carry on. can only know the power that he holds when we truly see how deep our weakness goes his strength in us begins where ours comes to an end and he hears our humble and it proves again that his strength is perfect when our strength is gone. He'll carry us when we can carry on, raised in his power. His strength is perfect. His strength is perfect. His strength is perfect. Let's pray. Father, forgive us for the times that we've neglected your strength. We've tried to do it on our own. We've tried to, to forge forward, and we sometimes get ahead of you. Sometimes we get behind you. Sometimes we're nowhere close to where you are. So today, 
Lord, as we ponder these things in our hearts, as we, as we consider that, that your strength is active in our lives, we call upon you to be right where we are at our point of weakness, and that that weakness in us might be glory in your name. Father, watch over us in these moments, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Arch is going to come and uh, lead us in our closing song as the band takes their place, so, um, so please uh, sing along. When I look back over my life and see how God took somebody who was broken and spent some years in vanity and pride, when I see how the power of God transformed my life. I'm so thankful this morning because I can stand and lead this song this morning. God worked a miracle in my life and I'm so thankful because years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing that it was for me that he died on Calvary, because mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me, and there my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Could we have the first two verses, Bandmaster, please? And let's stand and sing it this morning, praising God for what he did in our lives. together and we will sing the fourth band master please now I have given to Jesus everything now I gladly own him as my king now my raptured soul can only sing of Calvary and the power of Calvary let's sing the last verse together please oh of love that was shouldn't find
Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for meeting with us this morning. We thank you for speaking to our hearts and our soul today. We pray now that as we move away from this place and share in fellowship together, we pray that you will go with us and bless us through this coming week. In the name of Christ, amen. Benediction, please. Amen.